Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about the absolute sparking of the market today. We're going to discuss what caused it, the Tesla meltdown, and we're going to dig deep here. The S&P 500, you can see this as glass half full or glass half empty. We had a big down day, right? Finished about one and a half percent down. We undercut the low of the day from two sessions ago. And we also slip below that monthly value area. Now, if we had closed down there, that would obviously be the worst thing possible. We have this VPOC down here at about 3,700. I do think you want to keep that level on your screen, especially heading into Q1 of 2023. That definitely seems like it could be a logical downside target. But with that said, we live to fight another day. We have finished inside of value. So right now, this is looking like into Christmas, into the holidays, you know, maybe it's just a shakeout. And, you know, the holidays are typically very low volume and very quiet. This season specifically kind of reminds me of what happened in 2018, but we'll see if we can get at least a rally into Christmas. The VIX finished up 9.47%. I also think looking at this glass half full it's always good to see a long upper wick on the VIX. This morning, we got some pretty bad economic data, and we discussed this in our Discord. Let's pull it up. There's going to be no fancy edits for tonight. I have a meeting at 7 p.m. Let's take a look here. So this was a double whammy, right? And it was basically two indicators we didn't want. We had this PCE data that came out at 8.30 a.m., and remember, that's inflation data. It's the Fed's preferred gauge. And it, this came out at a 4.7% reading, which was just a hair above the consensus of 4.6%. These inflation data points, every one of them is like an explosive device just waiting to go off. So basically what this tells us is, hey, maybe inflation is slowing a little bit slower than we thought it would. And then also we had our leading economic index right here. It came out at 10 a.m. This came in at a negative 1% reading. It was expected to come in at negative 0.4%. So that is telling us that the economy is decelerating faster than expected. So remember, that's exactly what we don't want to see. We shared this slide in our weekend market analysis video and this is really just diving into the setup that we have into q1 we've got the economy and earnings that are decelerating we've got inflation decelerating and market liquidity decelerating the worst case scenario is the economy deteriorates very quickly but inflation does not deteriorate as quickly and today's data showed us that for at least one day's worth of data, we are on track for that to be happening. Also, we got David Tepper, who was on CNBC, super smart hedge fund manager. He came out and basically said the setup for the upcoming year is horrible. And it just led to a lot of mayhem in the market. The NASDAQ finished down below this monthly value area. Not really the best look, right? Our Russell 2000, not as bad. The Russell 2000, long lower wick here. This one was already pretty technically broken. We took out that VPOC a couple days ago and we actually made a higher low. So this still horrible, but not quite as horrible. And then the Dow Jones finished out. Yeah, we're still above this 50 day SMA. This thing kind of looks a little broken as well, technically. So here's what we did in terms of trades this morning. Now, when I saw that economic data, uh, I just knew that today was not going to be such a good day for the market. And we indicated that in our pristine capital discord. So what I did, my trend model flipped intraday. I closed out the remaining half of my Juniper common shares. I uh, took this one off for a negative 0.3 R. So I basically lost, you know, 30% of my risk budget. Not bad at all. And then I closed out my four common shares for a plus 0.4 R trade. So basically I took two scratches, you know, just to really de-risk myself. And I'm glad that I did that because the market cascaded throughout the day. But then as we started to get that long upper wick on the VIX and some bids started coming back into the market, I added Crocs and I added Pinduoduo. So let's check out Crocs. This is the best chart that I've seen out there. Yeah, we're still trading above this monthly value where I just think it looks pretty fantastic. If the market has a bounce, I think this stock is really likely to break out. And then Pinduoduo, this is a stock that we got long on one of these candles right here. We rode this one through the explosion higher and we pieced out of it. And now here we are re-entering. We pulled back to the 20 day simple moving average and we're pretty much holding the line there. Keep in mind, we're still quite a ways away from the 50 day SMA. So that is a risk. But with this one, I have a very tight stop on it. And this China group has been so strong on a relative basis. 
that I want to make sure I continue to go to the strongest groups and put my chips there. Now we have to mention Tesla. Tesla finished down 8.88%. Now, if you watched my video, you know that I put on some Tesla call options. I believe it was on this candle right here. You know, I put on the March call options, but that has not been the best trade. It's my only options trade. I sized it for a max loss. And yeah, this one got absolutely obliterated today. We are getting a little bit more positive sentiment in the after hours. Elon Musk was on a Twitter space and he made some good noises on the space. Basically said he's not going to sell shares uh, until 2025, which is good. And he just gave some positive affirmations to people on the space pretty much. It appears that there were some liquidations going on in this stock because I know everyone's bearish on Tesla now. I know I got in a couple days too early, but I really don't think this is fundamental investors saying like, yeah, I think now's a good time to sell. I think this is most likely the acceleration capitulatory phase of this sell-off. And, you know, it's pretty remarkable that we're really not even getting a bounce. Tomorrow potentially is the first day to get that bounce. So heading into tomorrow, we've only got a couple more days till Christmas, right? or really tomorrow and that's it. And then we have one more week of trading and the year is over. I think there's a good shot at getting the bounce because we closed with a long uh, lower wick on some of these indices. So we will see, it's very tough to get much exposure on in this market because if you're using progressive exposure, at least for me, I'm not really getting a whole lot of traction in my long trade. So we're really just taking it day by day I think some of these dynamics will shift as soon as the calendar year flips over because I believe it's almost like a basketball game where, you know, what's going to happen the last minute of a basketball game when one team is up 120 to 100? It's garbage time. I think at this point in the year, last couple days of the trading year, it's pretty much garbage time as well. And there's going to be some shifts that come at the beginning of the year. With that said, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like button on it. Also, subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate you guys, and we'll see you all next time.